The following audio presentation is a production of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, in association with the Division of Continuing Studies and the Institute on Ethnicity, Culture, and the Modern Experience. This production was originally funded by the New Jersey Historical Commission and has been remastered by the Rutgers ITV studio. Paul Robeson was born in Princeton, New Jersey in 1898, the son of an escaped slave. A brilliant student, he won a scholarship to Rutgers University in 1915. But as one of only two African-American students, he was greeted with a beating when he tried out for the football team. Still, he rebounded and was twice named All-American. Robeson graduated with honors and went on to Columbia Law School. But eventually he got involved in theater, where he came to the attention of playwright Eugene O'Neill. Smithers, you have just had an audience with the Emperor Jones. The unique thing about my father was his affect, the way he stood, looked. Paul Robeson, Jr. So it was a, you'd have to say, breathtaking black male image in the days of the minstrel show, and it was just stunning. Swing low, sweet it's perhaps as a singer that Paul Robeson is still most revered. The Negro spirituals came out of the slave culture, the expression of a people's feelings in song. Dad brought that to the concert stage unaltered and did it with an artistic finesse that didn't wipe out its essence. In 1927, Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein wrote the song Old Man River, specifically for Paul Robeson. The show would stop, the music and the banjo stuff would slow down, and the lights would come up, and there was this almost motionless, dignified, powerful figure singing this song, and it was a totally anti-stereotypical image, despite some of the stereotypical lyrics, which ultimately he changed mightily. Those lyrics became You show a little grit and you land in the jail. What Dad did is, is transform the lyrics, making it into a song of protest, which carried through the 30s and 40s and became a signature song as a song of protest, not as a lament. I get weary and sick of trying. I'm tired of living and scared of dying. Those words were changed to... But I keep laughing instead of crying. I must keep fighting until I'm dying. And In 1943, oh, Paul Robeson became the first African American in the U.S. to play Shakespeare's Othello, and his performance is considered to be the definitive version. But no amount of success could insulate Paul Robeson from the communist witch hunts of the late 40s and 50s, especially for such an outspoken black man. They suggested that when I was abroad, I spoke out against injustices to the Negro people in the United States. I certainly did. What worried the authorities most about Paul Robeson, about Martin Luther King Jr. a generation later, was they represented a powerful, independent attitude that appealed to masses of black people, and that was intolerable. That is full black equity, full black citizenship without delay, was intolerable to the American elite. to speak my mind out, that's America to me. What many would still find unforgivable, even today, was Robeson's open embrace of the Soviet Union. But Paul Robeson Jr. says most white Americans have a very different view of the world than most black Americans. Our worst enemies, are the right wing of American politics. From a black point of view, that's our version of Hitler. 
the worst evil is the one that's doing the most to us. We'll worry about the other stuff later. Here's a man of such great intellect, such compassion, such humanitarianism. How could he, quote, stoop to a moral level that doesn't equate all evil and go after it equally? Well, because he's black American in America in the 1940s and behaves that way, which is an important cultural note which most white Americans don't want to accept. Paul Robeson was blacklisted and his passport was suspended in 1947, effectively stopping his career for 11 years. Here he is in 1952. What would my father say to me if he were alive? He would say, it's hard, son, but don't forget that I was born in slavery and that your people were not able to do anything as free people for a long, long while. But they struggled. They fought. Finally, in 1958, Robeson was once again allowed to perform and travel. But the years of turmoil had taken their toll. Poor health forced him to retire in 1963. He died in 1976. Certainly a hundred years from now, let's say, people will still be looking at his films, reading about his theatrical performances, reading what he wrote way back when he was in his 30s and 40s, and above all, listening to his music. I don't think there'll be too much concern about what he said about politics in 1930 or 40 or 50, in the year 2150. I pray you in your letters, when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate nor set down aught in malice. I'm Neil Rauch from New Jersey Times.